What up, y'all? It's your boy, <laughs> the one and only A Switch, aka the undisputed, uncontested, undefeated social distancing champion, aka I'm fully vaxxed, boy. <laughs> You could you could kind of see the band aid, but you see it, you see it. Ha <laughs> ha! Let me get the. I gotta do it. Somebody. Nope, that ain't it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, AKA the buttermilk bastard, AKA the taco meat tyrant, <laughs> AKA the nickel up master. Bringing you yet another episode of Switches Sights, episode 105 to be exact. Uh, Switches Sights podcast is a video game podcast where we talk about just that. Um, today's date is uh, May 20th, 2021. Um, hey, it's uh, two days two days for my birthday I'm getting up there I'm getting up there 32 gonna be 32 that's that's well that's I say it out loud that sounds so weird but hey you know what I'm just uh I'm just getting closer <laughs> I'm just getting closer to that silverback st- <laughs> that silverback status watch your back George Clooney I'm coming for you. <laughs> you about to get dethroned, George Clooney. I'm letting you know. Um, oh, I forgot. Uh, AKA, um, <laughs> uh, the, <laughs> I can't even get it out. <laughs> I can't even get it out. Uh, the buff, uh, the buff, uh, uh Lionel Richie, um, let me, re- let me rephrase that. Lionel Richie, buddy buff. <laughs> uh, let me stop. Oh, man. Um, yeah. So, uh, personally, yeah, I uh, got fully vaccinated today. Uh, no symptoms, boy. No <laughs> symptoms. You love to see it. You love to see it. Yeah, you love to see it. Um, yeah. So, pretty, pretty seamless. Uh, I was fearful that I would be out of commission, but no, your boy is up and standing with standing. I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, outside of that world wise, uh, gaming world wise specifically, um, some pretty steady things happened. Um, uh, some very unfortunate stuff. Uh, RIP to Paul Mooney man uh damn legend i know he's been i think he's most mostly uh, i think it depends on you ask i know he's mostly known for uh writing for um uh richard pryor for a lot of his stuff as well as uh being in a lot of Ch- Chappelle show segments <laughs> negro Domus. oh my god that was <laughs> Uh, what was the one quote that was circulating around Twitter or whatever? Uh, what did he say? Um, was it Brian Gumble? Brian Gumble makes Wayne Brady look like Malcolm X. <laughs> uh, he is so real and I love it and appreciate him for that. Um, but yeah, man, all these legends, man, just, just, just going away. It's just really unfortunate. And, uh, probably the biggest one we'll talk about in a bit. I think that, uh, definitely affected, especially a lot of people in the gaming community for sure. Uh, you know, since anime gaming all fall within that similar realm. But with that being said, um, let's stop the dilly dallying, uh, and get right into it. Um, first topic of discussion. So yes, unfortunately, some very, very sad news. Um, man, uh, Kentaro Muir, author of, uh, of the 
what critically acclaimed infamous um legendary uh uh series that is known as berserk uh passed away i guess i believe two weeks ago of uh aortic aortic con con concoction connection let me let me re look that back up because that was like a very weird one super weird aortic something aoric aoric dissection which i'm curious actually what that is i don't want to get too graphic but thinner Serious condition condition in which the inner layer of the aorta, the large blood vessel uh, branching of the heart, tears. Oh man, Jesus! Now causing middle layers of the aorta to separate, and dissect. Jesus, that is, whew, that that is horrible. Um, but yeah, man. Um, if you for those that may not know. Um, I mean, Berserk has literally directly inspired so many forms of, uh, especially games, so many, uh, game series, at least ones that come on off the top of my head. Um, for sure. Of course, Dark Souls, heavy, heavy Berserk references and influence, um, Dragon's Dogma, um, Technically, Final Fantasy, you know, with uh, Cloud's uh, Buster Sword, that's clearly a direct reference. Um, yeah, it's like so many, <laughs> like every literal game, like every game, like a uh, character creator has at least one or two <laughs> references to, to uh, Berserk in some way, shape or form. Um, so, I mean, and, and then, of course, various developers, uh, of course, directly reference uh berserk is their inspiration so you can clearly you know tell how much of an impact this series has directly you know had in terms of uh fantasy especially yeah especially the fantasy genre um you know it's undeniable really so it's it's i mean as somebody who who's technically not been like really directly associated with manga uh, in general, like I've read, like, I think a good 50 issues of, uh, from a friend that actually is probably (laughs) the biggest berserk fan I know, um, that, uh, yeah, man, um, just, just seeing the art direction and the storytelling is, is some, it's some, it's, it's really unrivaled stuff, man. I, I, at least (laughs) kind of the, provide a slight backstory on my experience or how I kind of got familiar with berserk was <laughs> I swear I'll be getting introduced to some of these big series, like in the weirdest ways possible. So for me personally, how I, I started with berserk was actually <laughs> the dreamcast game, uh, sort of berserk guts is rage, I believe. And I mean, the story of that game was really damn good. They had some very like, I, I I literally cried a couple moments, man, because they was they was man, they was they were doing stuff that I never was exposed to. So at least knowing that at least remotely having that story kind of affect me and that only being like a sliver, not even like, you know, people say, man, you wait till you read the manga, you know, so just as only a, a little slidge of, you know the immense impact that, uh, berserk, you know, had at least to me. And, you know, I always loved the character guts, especially, you know, in the games, having a big ass sword and having this, uh, stoic personality, just, you know, uh, just, just being, just taking it, taking it all in stride and like, ah, uh, you can't, you can't beat me. I don't, (laughs) That's my, that's my horrible interpretation of guts, but all this to to say, 
you know, how much of an impact that, um, Kentaro Muir had, uh, specifically in the gaming community, of course, obviously in anime and other, you know, manga and stuff like that too. So, and yeah, that, it actually, it did devastated me, man. Just being in complete belief, disbelief of it all, you know, somebody that has, uh, this long running series, I'm not familiar with berserk in terms of the manga, in terms of like where they're at story wise, which is actually what I've been meaning to do to actually start, um, finishing up. I think I was on 50 something, um, with the books, but, um, yeah, man sad times really sad 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 times really is but yeah definitely r.i.p to kentaro miura um i uh i saw that uh final fantasy 14 oh what do you know yet another game <laughs> uh yet another game that's heavily uh inspired by berserk in a lot of ways um a, a lot of people they had like a memorial for him and you know just it's the impact this this guy has made, man, is 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 uh is impeccable really. Like it just goes to show how, you know, revolutionary somewhat of a uh what's the word? Like a uh I don't know, catalyst, if you will, of you know, what the extent of creativity creativity and imagination you can have with, you know, various means of art. You know, so, Whew, man, that, that is, a. Uh, it's, it's still for some reason, just, it's, it's sad, you know, some, somebody so legendary, uh, going away, you know, uh, 54. <sighs> yeah. So again, RIP Kentaro Miura, man. Uh, so, um, moving on, um, Summer Games Fest. Um, we got some more details. Uh, basically, Summer Games Fest is kind of like, well, I guess some like games, the games awards, <laughs> but in summer, <laughs> if you want to want to boil it down to the basics. But uh, yeah, uh, so we did get some uh, slight, uh, well, various confirmations that's making this event actually look to be a very serious uh, competitor to to uh e3 actually how much that will actually affect it uh you know how much how much that actually will be or the extent of what it will be i think that's yet to be seen but at least going by what uh they have slated um they have a showing of all the perspective um uh companies are that are gonna show something there uh, 2k Activision, um, Amazon games. It looks like, uh, that's, that's kind of interesting. I don't think we've seen, we heard, uh, various stuff regarding Amazon games, but not necessarily. I'm not sure. I think there might've been an IP or two that we heard, but not necessarily fully concrete. I don't, I don't recall, but Amazon games and a Pur Purna interactive Bandai Namco entertainment, Blizzard entertainment, Capcom, Devolver Digital, Dot EMU, oh, <laughs> Treasure Rage for DLC. I hope. Ah, oh, please be a set. Oh, please be a shadow drop. Uh, EA, uh, Epic Games, Finji. I wonder if that is one of the Chinese developers that was working on like these out of nowhere dope ass uh, games that uh, I know we saw the one of the two. I forgot the one with the. Final Fantasy, dude, it was like Final Fantasy and Devil May Cry. I know we talked about it on a previous episode. And then there was one about like the Monkey King, uh, like lore as well. That would look pretty good. Uh, Frontier, uh, Gearbox, Hyra Studios, Inner Sloth. I believe that's Among Us people. I'm pretty sure. Uh, Koch, Coach, Koch Media, Media Tonic, Mihoyo. Uh, PlayStation. I'm curious what what does that mean? Because I feel like I think, or no, I I I, I do recall PlayStation pulling out of E3. So actually, they might maybe you know, pu 
pull all the guns out for this. We'll see. We'll see. Am I because of time of lights and um Psionics, uh Raw Fury, Riot Games, Saber Interactive, Sega. Uh ooh, could be a, a possibly the next Yakuza, mainline Yakuza game. Uh Square Enix. Um Steam. Oh, so that <laughs> could be that Steam announcement of uh, some of their games coming to a uh, console. Tencent, um, Tribeca Festival. I think maybe this might be that indie indie showcase. I know that uh, Jeff seems to have around these events where uh, like people can actually literally play the games and demos, which is that would be pretty cool if that actually is the case. Uh, Ubisoft, um, Warner Brother Games. Uh, Wizards of the Coast, I think, don't they make cards? Do, are they, are they with Hearthstone maybe? I don't know about that one. Um, and Xbox, which again is, Xbox is a little bit more weird because I know Xbox, they did confirm that they are going to be at E3. Uh, so how are they going to split that up across E3 as well as Summer's Game, Summer Game Fest, so going to be pretty interesting from that perspective to see, um, what, to see what, uh, (laughs) how games are going to be split up. Are we going to get like duplicates and see, Oh, Oh, this, Oh, we already saw this, but it's new to you. Uh, uh, actually, no, I think they might show different footage. Um, you know, that's one technique they use. Like They'll show the same game, but give you a different, slightly different trailer showing uh aspect they didn't show in another trailer at like whatever other event they had. So I'm guessing either that or we get the <laughs> literal exact same trailer uh, that we get at E3. Uh, considering uh, a lot of these companies seem to be crossing over, uh, at least Capcom, I know for sure, supposedly is going to be both in. I think Square Enix as well. So I guess we'll see. But uh, I mean, you know, we got Weezer. Weezer's going to be <laughs> having a live performance apparently as well. So <sighs> it's kind of crazy. We're coming around. We're getting close to that 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 time of year. Christmas for gamers. Um, at least uh, for Summer's Game Fest, uh, it's kicking off J- Thursday, June 10th. Uh, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. What is BST? By <laughs> I want to say bicentennial time. I, let me look that up real quick, just for my sake. BST time. I've not heard that before. British summertime. Okay, I guess that makes sense because I know Jeff is normally associated with um Gamescom now, which is a uh, somewhat the E3 for Europe, more or less, at least that's how I interpret it. So cool stuff. And I believe they said they're going to be announcing more, um, games. Well, more companies that, that will potentially be, um, showing off. I would assume as well, closer to June 10th. So cool. Um, I, I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, moving on. Let's Grand Theft Auto five, the game, (laughs) the game we all probably have multiple times by now. Um, came out, came out initially in 2013, mind you. So what, uh, eight years now this game is running. (laughs) Uh, the also, also forgot to add the game that, uh, people won't stop, won't stop fucking (laughs) buying. (laughs) Please stop buying this damn game. So we can actually, uh, rockstar would actually be encouraged to, uh, make GTA six, which, you know, of course I'm assuming they're to some extent working on, um, uh, 
at to, at some capacity. But it's like while I say that, it's like GTA Online has some 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 like literally almost every week there's like a new miscellaneous update. Uh, I think it's funny. I think to the point where like media outlets are just getting tired of announcing stuff <laughs> because it's like just, just people getting inundated with all these various like minuscule announcements, like a new car here, a new car there, a new gun, um, uh, every now and then a new mission pack. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, anyway, at least to read their official announcement, um, the expanded, let me get my, get my, <laughs> get my developer, my, uh, <laughs> all right. Um, <laughs> all right. The expanded and enhanced versions of Grand Theft Auto five and Grand Theft Auto line are arriving on PlayStation five and Xbox series XX sex with new features and more on November 11th, 2021. As an added bonus, this summer's updates to GTA Online will include special benefits for players to take advantage of in these expanded and enhanced versions when they drop. Plus, in honor of the upcoming 20th anniversary of the genre-defining Grand Theft Auto 3, will have even more fun surprises to share, including some specifically for GTA Online players. I'm sorry. <sighs> okay. Uh, while standalone version of GTA Online will be available to players on both platforms, the, this new standalone version of GTA Online will be available for free exclusively to PlayStation 5 players during the first three months and PlayStation Plus members on PlayStation 4. Make sure to claim your GTA $1 million by visiting the PlayStation Store at the start of each month, every month until the launch of GTA Online on PlayStation 5. So, which which I, I know they announced way back, I think, during the announcement of the PlayStation five. So I guess that's technically not anything new. Um, at least I believe that those are technically the only details we pretty much got. Um, but I mean, I, I think it's pretty much a given we're going to get like pretty insane load times as well as, uh, at least I'm pretty sure like at least 60 FPS. Um, having that boost from, um, previous gen. Um, so I think those are at least the givens <sighs> curious what they, they could do. I mean, they are harking a lot on a GTA three. What will be crazy. I could see it is, you know, we might get a GTA three remake. I could see that they, uh, you know, straight up remake GTA three with the GTA five engine to some extent. I could see that. I could see that, especially now they seem to be break, branching out GTA online to make it its own thing entirely for the most part. So, um, probably maybe something similar to Warzone and call of duty where it's probably going to be, it's separate, separate, but attached ongoing thing. That'll be like tied to each, I guess, uh, iterative, um, grand theft auto game that comes out where, you know, each release of a new Grand Theft Auto may like substantially add a lot of stuff and functionality to GTA Online. I could definitely, definitely see that. Oh, you know, it'd be, I feel like this has probably been brought up before, but I'm not going to lie as somebody who's, uh, r mm, not, I do enjoy battle Royale. Um, yeah, who, who I let, let me say mildly enjoys Battle Royale. I could totally see um, uh, some really dope Battle Royale. Like just think about a Battle Royale GTA on um, just literally the whole map, like bumping that player count up to like, shoot, like 
300 players or something. That'd be kind of crazy. I think they released a mode before that was kind of a half-assed attempt at Battle Royale, but didn't really seem like a a worthwhile, legitimate attempt. Um, but you know, give us give us what we want, Rockstar. Give us that. Give us that dirty Battle Royale. That look, you know, that <laughs> white knuckle Battle Royale. You know, wanna wanna shoot somebody's grandma? <laughs> why, why you? <laughs> Why I gotta shoot somebody, Grandma? <laughs> uh, it's like that's not even necessary. But you know, I guess it would be cool, kind of like Titanfall, to have some like um, to have some. What am I thinking of? Like uh, some CPU mechanic as well, where you kind of get some slight fulfillment slash dopamine that you're actually doing something, like you know, killing innocent people and you get incentive for that. I think that'd be kind of cool, but maybe that's just me. I mean, they could, they could, sh- you know, emphasize on shooting grannies too. I mean, it's Grand Theft Auto. They've done, they've done uh way riskier stuff. So I wouldn't be surprised, but yet again, Grand Theft Auto releasing, releasing yet again on, <laughs> Uh, I wonder if I think this is technically, I wonder what the facts are, but I think this is technically, uh, it, for sure. Grand Theft Auto, the first, uh, Grand Theft Auto that spanned three generations, but I don't know. San Andreas, San Andreas on PS2. I know for sure it got ported on 360. I'm not sure about PlayStation 3. And then it got ported on PS4. Um Yeah, so it might be almost a tie between San Andreas and GTA 5. I mean, if if we're being technical, I think GTA 5 would be the definitive. Yeah, I think each literal iteration rather than like, you know, some ports being a loophole, you know, being playable on a previous platform, but technically being able to be played on like the Xbox series X via backwards compatibility. So I don't know, but I know it's, it probably can't be resident evil (laughs) four in terms of like how many damn, how many, a game with so many ports, uh, to various platforms. Yeah. I think resident evil four is, it's probably, probably Tetris. I forgot about that one, but it's, it, I'm pretty sure it's up there. Maybe if anything, probably top 10, I would, I would, I would guess, but, um, yeah, Hey, <laughs> because you, uh, you know, for all your other copies of Grand Theft Auto five, uh, here's another <laughs> buy it. I, I, I'm saying it like, I'm not going to do it, which I'm totally am <laughs> going to buy it yet again. Uh, uh, I'm part, maybe I'm part of the problem that that must be it. I mean, but I mean, there's gotta be somebody that's like, who, who doesn't have this game in some way, shape or form. I don't, I, I, I guess I'm, 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 I'm tripping over the fact that how this game is still like in the top 25 charts in terms of like the, um, top selling games of, uh, you know, the month it's like literally monthly. This game is at the very least, the top 25, if in, in a lot of surprising cases, top 10, uh, which is still crazy to me. I guess the only thing I think of is there's some like loophole with, um, like maybe people really are fiending for uh, GTA money where if you buy the game, you actually, uh, technically how maybe the math works out is that if you, if you buy the game, which I know there, I've seen some uh, bundles in, in, uh, for some of the games where if you buy the game, you actually get like, uh, I think it varies, but I know there's some pro- promos occasionally where you get like 20 million or, you know, uh, 10 million in GTA money, uh, when you buy the game, uh, or something like that. Cause I feel like that has to be the only way, unless maybe into some weird convoluted extent that like, 
buying GTA money like counts towards purchases towards the game, which I don't think that it works like that, but I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to rationalize <laughs> some way out of this game is still selling like crazy. I do not understand it. I, I feel like there's something illegal going on or there's just, it just does not make sense to me. I cannot fathom the fact that freaking what, uh, eight years later, this game is still fucking selling. <laughs> I don't get it. Ah, <sighs> that's like one of like, that's like damn near like the Bermuda triangle of uh com- conspiracy theories. It feels like to me, I don't know. Make me, make me want to put a tin foil hat on because I'm so, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. I'm st- <laughs> stop buying this. <laughs> I want GTA six already, but I mean, I guess that's kind of with rockstar. It feels like with each continuous iteration of the game, it takes longer and longer to come out. Like it feels like long gone are the, 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 the days that like, you know, I think we got GTA three and then two years later we got vice city. And I think like one year later we got San Andreas. Let's let's do a quick uh, fact check on that actually. Um, Cause I am curious. I am very curious. So I know GTA three came out in 2001. Yeah. So at least let's, we can look at the whole main line of this here. So Grand Theft Auto one, the very first one, uh, for the PS one 97, uh, GTA two in 1999 PS one dreamcast, uh, 2001 Grand Theft Auto three, uh, 2000. Wow. 2002. Grand Theft Auto Vice City came out. That's crazy. And then 2004, uh, San Andreas came out. And then four years after that, Grand Theft Auto 4. And then um, in 2013, Grand Theft Auto 5. And then, <laughs> of course, the various, <laughs> the various multiple, multiple, uh, multiple uh, iterations. <laughs> uh, therefore, yeah, Grand Theft Auto 5, PS3, 360, PS4, Xbox One, PS5, and Series X, and PC, of course. So, yeah, I guess technically, at least going by this, Grand Theft Auto 5 is technically the the game with the most ports by far. So, that's crazy. Oh, I forgot about the side stuff. There's, you know, Liberty City Stories and Vice City Stories. So Liberty city stories, 2005, 2006, vice city stories. And that's, this was all in the interim before, um, Grand Theft Auto four. So, I mean, still, um, the, the cadence is still very slow. At least if, if as you could see by the charts, it's like with each iterative release, it seems like it's way longer of a gap between, um, a new, a new release. So, and man, boy, <laughs> man, when, when GTA six comes out, boy, or, you know, announced it is about to be a damn frenzy. Let me tell you, it's about to be a damn people about to be right. <laughs> be be rioting. Uh, it was about to be pandemonium, man. Um, but Hey, there you go. GTA five. <laughs> for the buying it yet again <laughs> the same person going to GameStop uh excuse me sir let me get a GTA th- <laughs> again yes yes again don't you dare try to contest me trying to buy this game again because I, I do enjoy it very much moving on moving on Last of Us Part Two. I know it's a game that's been um yeah, it's definitely one of the more 
controversial games, I'd say. Either you generally feel one way or another about it, not necessarily. I, I, I've seen very few people that are kind of in between, I, which actually I kind of feel like I'm in that boat. I feel like I need to play it again to kind of solidify my thoughts, which, hey, for people like me, my prayers have been answered because I believe today, actually, um, or no, yesterday, um, Naughty Dog, we got, we got it. We got a performance patch, <laughs> guys, we got a performance patch, uh, for Last of Us Part 2, uh, for PS5. So basically it's a update for the game that, uh, basically lets you, uh, unlock the frame rate, uh, for PS5 owners where, uh, you do get that smooth, buttery, juicy 60 FPS, um, for Last of Us. I believe the resolution is pretty much the same. Um, I think it's like 1440p, but I think mixed in with the dynamic resolution where, you know, um, the res the res the, the game will prefer or prioritize frame rate. So in order to keep that frame rate, it'll potentially bump down the resolution to maintain, um, that proper frame rate to my understanding of that technology. But or what that means. So yeah, um, I saw the digital foundry video on it. Uh, it seems like actually the, this performance patch is pretty damn good. Um, from what they, they've, uh, tested, it seems to be like locked to a uh, 60 FPS on PS five, which is good to hear. Um, <laughs> yet, <laughs> oh man, yet another game I have to play. Uh, I have to replay, <laughs> Uh, not that I don't have a backlog or nothing, not that I don't have all these other games. I, I probably should be playing as well, but you know, what? Mm. um, so yeah, pretty cool. I think, uh, we've all been wanting it. We've all been curious about it. And I know with those rumors that were coming around, uh, which probably are, uh, you know, admittedly are probably still true, uh, regarding the last of us two <laughs> being remade, <laughs> which is so weird. It just fucking came out like a year ago, but all right, being remade. Um, they might probably bump it to 120 somehow, and then, you know, maybe make some other optimizations or give you more options, I, I would guess. But I, yeah, I would not put it out the ballpark that those, those rumors regarding, um, or no, was it the first one? I believe it was the first one they were going to remake again. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it was the first one. Never mind. Scratch that. So this does kind of make sense then because, yeah, it wouldn't make sense to <laughs> do Last was Part 2 remastered. Like, what? It already, already came out. Uh, I think this is probably what we're going to, the best we're going to get with Last was Part 2, just that this PS5 patch and then, you know, maybe PS6, PS7 or something. Probably, well, I... I hate to like look at it that far, but I think it's probably the best we'll get with last was part two. Uh, just that, that good 60 FPS update. And then of course, um, which we didn't still did not get any uh, details about, uh, factions 2.0, which, um, is, uh, the biggest question <laughs> as to when we'll get that. But I definitely could see, uh, June, or, you know, around being one of the announcements at Summer Games Fest or E3. Um, I could totally see that uh, being one of the announcements because that mode is so damn good. I'm telling you, if you've not played the first factions mode on um for the last the original last list, man, some damn good like multiplayer like it was unique. It's like something you couldn't get anywhere else. It, it, it encapsulates like a lot of the aspects of the, of the main game so well and actually translates it to a multiplayer environment. So well, Ugh. that's, I think that's the definitive example of how you do a multiplayer, uh, mode. Uh, I mean, of course, obviously this doesn't translate well to any, every game, but you know, um, as somebody who, I'll give it a try, but generally I'm very skeptical about games that are generally, or, you know, dev companies that are generally more 
mostly known for their single player content, even though I guess you can't really say that for Naughty Dog because they have um, Uncharted's multiplayer has always generally been very uh, has built a reputation as well. So, yeah, but I mean, just for this game, you, you know, it's you, you were kind of in that skeptical like mindset of like, I don't know how, <laughs> I don't know how they're going to make a multiplayer mode out of last of us. And they sure as hell did, man. And it was pretty damn fun. So, uh, <laughs> I doubt the online community is, uh, I mean, I think with any multiplayer game, there's always going to be a very dedicated hardcore fan base. But I mean, at the same time, <laughs> that is kind of a double edged sword because they're going to be as good as hell <laughs> and give you a very difficult uh, learning curve, um, and, uh, you know, from there. But <sighs> all in all, man, I cannot wait for factions to win on. It's going to be so damn good. I want it. I want it so bad. I really do. Give it to me, please, please right now please. Um, so yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll get that update or, you know, it might be completely standalone. Uh, actually I forgot about that, that how they, how they worded it, it could potentially be very standalone, but all in all, Hey, uh, we get, we, we, we get in these patches, we get in some, <laughs> some more reason to have a PS five, which is always great. I feel like I think pretty much almost every, semi recent PS4 game exclusive PS4 game has been enhanced in some way, shape or form. I want to say so if anything, man, if you, uh, if you, the <laughs> type has not played a PlayStation game and want to jump in, uh, it seems like, well, uh, if the stock situation ever becomes better, um, yeah, PS5 is, a very good, uh, very good entry point. Um, so yeah, there you go. Um, moving on. Virtual fighter. Uh, I, <laughs> I could do it now. I have a workaround. Virtual, Virtual fighter. fighter. <laughs> I wasn't sure about. <laughs> wasn't sure about it. Let me let me try. <laughs> I said it. It's like I said it, but mid sentence, I was like, um, <laughs> virtual, virtual fight. fight. <laughs> um, I guess yeah. You know what? It's funny because why I hesitated was because it's still up in the air what this is. So basically. Uh, via Virtual Fighter's official Twitter, which I think that was it. Was this made? This had to have been created. Oh, in May 2010. So technically, it's been ongoing. But either way, this is basically the official account for Virtual Fighter, to my understanding. Um, they announced that uh, a Virtual Fighter's Cross Esports official broadcast is going to be announced for May 27th. So we still don't know what it, so <laughs> virtual, virtual fighter. <laughs> I think that still stands. I'm gonna try virtual, virtual fighter, fighter cross, cross esports. E um, so yeah, so <sighs> it's like, where do I even start, man? Um, it, it because we're still in the dark what this even means or what this even is. Uh, a lot of people are speculating that this is legitimately virtual fighter five. Uh, but potentially, um, I know there's a lot of speculation that potentially they might implement rollback net code, which is generally the most, most favored net code, uh, when it comes to fighting games. Yeah, some form of rollback net code. Um, well, I know other people, various companies have their various techniques that and <laughs> where it's they technically like to call it rollback, but it's technically not rollback. But I mean, that's a whole different discussion. But what we generally believe as rollback net code, um, you know, that's at least the uh, speculation that that 
that might be a factor that the game is actually getting rebalanced to be more competitive and, you know, um, fair, uh, across the characters. Um, at least those are, I think those are at least the general big list, big wish list items. If they were, if this actually is even virtual fighter five and not a whole new virtual fighter, which is still feels like it's like, we're still in the dark about this. Like, what is it? Just tell us already. But I guess apparently we're going to find out come May 27th. So there you go. Um, I'm not sure. I feel like I personally, um, being a, being a, uh, I'm not going to say recent fan. Cause I've, I've actually followed virtual fighter for a good while, but personally, I think it will make the most sense to do a new virtual fighter. Um, you know, to work it from the ground up to actually, you know, get all the balancing underway and all that, but we don't, that's personally, I think what I would want, but I mean, I totally would be okay with a virtual fighter five being retooled and re-released to try to gauge interest of people. If they want to get into, uh, you know, bring virtual fighter into the official, you know, fighting game realm amongst the, you know, greats that are Tekken, Tekken seven, virtual fighter, not virtual fighter, uh, street fighter five, mortal Kombat, etc. So yeah. And th- l- let me look at the, look at the YouTube. Oh, <laughs> this is just the channel. So they got a link in that tweet, but it just takes you to the YouTube channel with, with nothing. So it's like, thanks. Thanks virtual fighter. Give us something. Hopefully man, this, it, this is either going to be very, very awesome or very disappointing. And I, I don't like the fact that it's, it, it's, it's that 50, 50, <laughs> I guess fighting pun intended. Um, yeah, I don't know what the hell what was that? That was weird. Either way, um, yeah. So we'll see. We'll 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 see. We'll see. Uh. I don't know, but we'll see, I guess. Uh, <laughs> moving on. Um, damn it. Of course, I made another note that I want to. Uh, time splitters, new game in development. Um, so this was announced by the new company, uh, free radical design. Um, so I believe that's yeah. Free radical dot free radical design, which was damn buster studios when they were creating time splitters. And that's exactly what the new studio will do. New time splitters in development. So I believe this is under deep silver. Yeah. So under deep silver, which is, I believe the publisher, um, will have this new team dedicated to making uh virtual fire, not virtual fighter <laughs> time, time splitters. So that's pretty cool. I think, uh, this game definitely has a lot of potential to be, um, be continued since it does have a lot of interesting, I guess, aspects to kind of, um, touch on, um, that I think could definitely be played with, with a, with a new game. Um, I've, I've loved time splitters too. At least that's the one I have the most kind of memory and attachment to. Um, yeah, I, 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 um, didn't play three. I think three was future perfect. Um, and did not play one. I think one was technically exclusive to the PlayStation two. I want to say, um, but I really loved, uh, time splitters two specifically. And these were, I think the same people that technically made, um, 
GoldenEye and Perfect Dark. So I think a good amount of them worked on those games. And uh, I think when Rare, you know, split up and whatnot, they did their own thing or whatever. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, mm, I'm curious uh, what this will look like. If, uh, I don't know, part of me kind of wants the game to be more classic, if that makes sense. Like to kind of feel similar to the older games, which in turn <laughs> kind of feel reminiscent of Perfect Dark and uh, Golden Eye. So I think to kind of make it stand out, I feel like that might be one of its potential strengths if it decides to, you know, um, pursue that. But I mean, I guess we'll see um, how that how that comes to be or what that looks like. But it would be cool regardless. I definitely would like it. I would appreciate it. I would want it. Um, but I mean, regardless, it's pretty cool. We'll, we'll get a new time splitters. Hopefully, maybe we might get um, ports of the original games or maybe the original games may be included within this game would be pretty cool. Um, maybe like I would assume like a pre-order bonus or something, which I, I feel, I feel icky suggesting that because part of me doesn't want to enable that. But I mean, at the same time I would pre-order if that was the case too. So I am <laughs> all these things that I'm against, I am also being a part of the problem, which is, it's sad, but I mean, it's sad, but true. It really is. <laughs> anyway, hey, time, time splitters is back. Getting ready to split some time. <laughs> That's right. It's like with somebody who's not even no remote affiliation with the series, like <laughs> sports, you put the, you, you make the goal. Yeah. We're splitting time. All right. Ah. <sighs> With that note, <laughs> um, let's get into uh, that, 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 that concludes the news for this episode as well as we'll get into uh, what I've been playing, um, which has been, um, I have been playing uh, Resident Evil Village. I've still been playing it, but specifically um i've been playing the uh village uh mercenaries mode which is basically the long uh desired awaited mode that is a comeback that uh, i'm i'm desiring i'm craving um so it has come back um and it's pretty fun uh it it it's is not how do I phrase this? It's mercenaries, but in its own unique way, uh, as well as you know, makes it mercenaries within the Resident Evil 8 kind of confines, if you will. So it's uh, yeah, I guess I always associate melee combat and um, yeah, mainly melee combat and you know, the traditional uh. I mean, outside of that, you do have the time bonuses and stuff too, but it, it feels very different. Um, a good amount from traditional mercenaries in a lot of ways, actually. Um, you do get the, uh, the upgrade system in, in, in like the main game, you do get like a very truncated version, uh, where you can upgrade weapons, uh, but it, you know, in a more expedited rate because each level or stage is cons how did each level consist of multiple stages? Um, it could, it varies depending on the stage as well, but, um, overall it's pretty fun. I'm actually enjoying it. I feel like I'm kind of cheating because <laughs> this mode I'm actually playing on PC on with keyboard and mouse, which I feel like is technically a, huge advantage compared to controller. I've not played this mode on controller yet. A uh, part of me is curious to, to pl I will definitely probably do that at some point just out of curiosity. Um, but man, I feel like with, uh, 
with a mouse and keyboard, you feel like you got to <laughs> you playing with a cheat code or something because like aiming is like like pinpoint uh, super sharp. Um, I feel like just accuracy wise is super easy uh, to get these multipliers since how this game works is um, which I believe is pretty much yeah, it's pretty similar to the previous mercenary games where you kill when you kill somebody you get a counter and you know, ideally you want to get the counter all the way up, at least within the confines of this mode, there's a definitive amount of enemies on each stage. Unlike the previous games where at least RE4, um, I guess six implemented it after two, but at least specifically regarding four, there was pretty much an infinite number of enemies for the most part. And, you know, they would keep spawning, but in this one, there's a definitive amount that spawn, which is kind of good and bad because on the good side, you actually do get to kill, um, you know, where enemies spawn for sure. And you can, um, deliberately trigger where they spawn, um, which is an advantage in a lot of ways. But uh, on the, the other end of that is that in some cases I found myself missing like some cue points to spawn certain enemies. And then they wouldn't, um, they wouldn't, uh, I would miss the, them spawning and then I would be confused and basically running all the way back and trying to find the one straggling enemy that is still alive. That would just totally mess up my combo counter. And then another aspect of this game is that you do get, um, more points, the faster you complete the stage and, uh, you do gain a lot of time by killing people in rapid succession as well. So like I said, it's kind of a, uh, a, a double edged sword in that aspect where it, it can be both positive and negative, um, depending on how you perceive it. So, I mean, you have that factor, which, uh, you know, it definitely took some getting used to, um, I'm trying to think anything that would necessarily get in the way outside of that. Um, um, there are boss enemies, which is that's still somewhat of a staple of mercenaries where you kill them in quick succession as well. But <laughs> I forgot probably the biggest, uh, uh, I'm not sure. I guess it depends on how, who, who you talk to, but, uh, it's something that it, let me, I, I guess, let me paint the picture in terms of, uh, the other aspect I forgot to mention was the, um, perks that basically you pick up throughout each stage where various attributes like, uh, head, headshots do more damage, uh, handguns do more damage. Um, what else was there? Like, uh, you do 30% more damage shooting a person for the first time if they're full health or whatever, stuff like that. Um, those like when you get towards end game, those like stack up like crazy. And then on top of like an upgraded gun, like towards the end of a stage, you are like mowing through people, enemies like nothing, which is pretty cool. It's actually a change of pace from mercenaries from other games where it's like, you're always at a very flat, uh, yeah, very flat, like default, um, you know, I guess, uh, advantage slash disadvantage line, but at least with this, it feels like each stage you definitely get progressively, uh, more powerful and the enemies stay the same <laughs> or get weaker, you know, depending on your upgrade path. But man, I have to say in terms of the, um, there's definitely some very, I feel like it's intentional, but at the same time, it may be too broken. I don't know. It depends on, like I was saying earlier, it depends on who you ask, but like basically at least what I was doing in the game after playing a couple rounds, I was like, I was discovering that like, I basically, all I technically need to do is to, to at least the, the, the goal of, of the game is on each stage is to get triple S to unlock, um, additional weapon to use in the, the campaign which is basically to, um, 
get a pistol, the the strongest pistol in the game. I think it's like a, it's technically a submachine gun, but uh, you know, after you fully upgraded it, I believe it turned into one. I'm not sure, but at least in the the this game, it is super like OP. It feels like so you basically get that, and then pretty much if you just <laughs> literally sell all your other ammo. Uh, cause like you get a lot of handgun ammo, shotgun, well, no, not a uh, handgun, but sniper ammo, shotgun ammo. Uh, if you sell all that and even like your first aid sprays, because it's like, I literally barely would ever get touched. If you sell all that and then just put it all into the pistol in terms of upgraded, you can literally upgrade it fully, like within the two first two stages. And then you're like literally mowing people down in like one or two shots and, it makes the game super, um, super easy. But I, like I say that, but now I remember like, uh, basically when you beat the main stages, they give you like, a, <laughs> at least what I interpret as like a EX, <laughs> EX stage, but the catch is they totally change up the weapons you're able to buy. So it feels like it's, in, it's, it's, inten- it's intentional slash not intentional where it's like they technically like <laughs> they technically patch it out in uh the the harder stages so it's it either way it's 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 uh you you part you partially feel kind of a I want to say yeah slight guilt <laughs> because you mowing over these people so easily but i mean it's technically in the game and you know people would uh you know I don't even know. It's like, it's, you can still die. It's just, it's like you just super powerful and the odds are very not towards you dying. If if that makes sense. So I don't know, man, it's, uh, yeah, it's fun though. I'm not going, (laughs) don't get it wrong. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's totally fun as hell though. Um, so I was having a, I was having a fun ass time. Um, at least going through those stages, I'm um, still a couple stages. I need to get the triple S on, but, um, overall very fun mode. Um, I, 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 I came into it thinking it was going to be super short, but it doesn't seem like it, I guess with the replay replayability and trying to get the high, uh, highest tiers to unlock some of the weapons, but it seems pretty, uh, I think there's technically five stages. It feels like, and then, there's more stages that are the harder versions of it with, you know, those variants I talked about in terms of the weapons that are available to you. So it's, it's pretty fun. I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I plan to get back to it after I'm done with, of course, probably the game that I've probably played the most mass effect legendary edition. Um, man. Uh, so I'm playing through the first one. Right now, I'm technically, I'm think I'm close to beating it. Um, pretty much did literally everything uh, I could think of in the game, all the side stuff. But uh, I guess just to provide a little bit of backstory in terms of like my experience with the series, um, I joined the Mass Effect train late. I played uh, during college. I caught up on a, <laughs> I caught up on a lot of games in college, but um, Mass Effect was one of them where, uh, yeah, I literally got all three and pretty much played them one after the other. Uh, at least at the time I didn't necessarily do all the side stuff. I just pretty much critical pathed it. And then <laughs> I paid the biggest price for doing that because, um, man, I, <laughs> I paid a hefty price for that too, because I wasn't aware that, uh, I, I think I didn't get my charm up. Uh, and I also, I guess, I guess technically this is spoilers for mass effect, which is like, a how long is it? Like a 15, 16 year old game if you haven't played it. But, um, yeah, I (laughs) didn't get my, my charm up, uh, as well as I didn't do the side quest, uh, specifically for Rex to get the family armor which in turn, I think helps, um, get him in your favor, but basically, uh, I guess spoilers again for mass effect one, 
uh, but a 16, 17 year old game if you haven't played it, but I don't, um, anyway, um, basically there's a point in the game where, uh, I believe it's regarding the genophage, which is basically more or less this, um, process that like, um, caused Rex's, uh, family, the, the Krogans to be basically near extinction where he, uh, it was a conflict of interest where pretty much Saren, who's this, the main enemy of this game was, uh, basically producing something to counteract that in order to produce more Krogans for his wrongdoing, basically. But, you know, at least Rex saw it, uh, perceived it as just a way to get more Krogans and prevent extinction. So, you know, he totally will turn evil kind of where he's, you know, combating against Shepard about the belief that actually we shouldn't stop him from doing this specifically. So basically it comes to that point where you either can kill or you basically be forced to kill him or you can convince him if you have, again, I'm, I'm not sure how that works out, but either both the family armor as well as charm, uh, charm skill to, uh, convince him to stay and not, and know that this is wrong. Uh, but <laughs> at least unfortunately at the time I did it and, uh, I, 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 he had to die and I felt, I felt horrible for <laughs> at the time because I like, I really liked him as a character. I could kind of identify him, identify with him. He was like stoic and very, uh, you know, what's the word? Very, um, to the point, I guess very, uh, matter of fact, I guess. I don't know. So that, that totally like wrecked me <laughs> to be honest <laughs> because I was like, Oh man, he's so cool, man. Oh. And then you get like, uh, what in the, in the next game you get, you know, you get basically the, <laughs> you get the, basically the great value. <laughs> dollar store version of Rex essentially at least that's I, I can't even tell you his name because like he's he's that generic it felt like you know he just felt like uh yeah I'm just here because Rex died so yeah welcome welcome to the crew <laughs> so um so I, I can I can now say that uh I think a couple of days ago a couple of nights ago I successfully we successfully, uh, uh, saved Rex. He is now, uh, still with our team. Um, so that was my, <laughs> that was my biggest go actually in this, this playthrough of this, this edition is to save fucking Rex. Damn it. And, uh, I did. So I'm very, <laughs> I'm weirdly very, uh, very excited about that for some strange reason, but it is like the most minuscule thing for me, man. It just, it, it felt good. you know, <laughs> I was ranting about it slightly on Twitter, but basically, um, oh yeah. Like, cause I never did his, uh, family armor quest before. So I did it, got him the armor. <laughs> He's like, thank you, Shepard. Nobody's ever done this for me before. And then, um, what, what he, he said, like, uh, uh, I, I, I think I like you Shepard. I'm like, oh, oh my God, oh my God. we're bonding. This is <laughs> Rex actually has a motive. <laughs> uh, so that, that, uh, that threw me for a loop, uh, at least not experience, not, uh, experiencing that before, like what, eight years ago. So I'm happy. I'm validated. I've, uh, redempt, redeemed, <laughs> redempt, redeemed myself, um, to now, uh, saved Rex. So that's all that matters. Uh, I don't care about anybody else else's validation. Um, as long as I'm validated by Rex, that's, <laughs> that's all I really need in life. You know, I don't care about my dad. <laughs> okay. <don't care. laughs> I don't care about friends. All right. I just, as long as Rex validates me, that's, <laughs> that's all I need in life. <laughs> Oh, it's it's, it's funny on so many levels in terms of like, you know, well, you, you get it. So, oh man, that, that, it it threw me for a loop, but either way, so 
That was that was at least personally my biggest highlight of Mass Effect One. <laughs> Saving Rex and not letting him go, you know. Uh I mean, if we get on this discussion, let's talk about uh Caden uh while we at it. Um Caden I mean more power to you if you like Caden as a character, but I'm like, you know what? Uh, I guess again, spoilers for Mass Effect One if you haven't played a 16 year old game yet. But uh, for Caden, uh, you do well. You come to this point where you know you have to decide between him or uh, Ashley Williams, which I'm kind of a little bit. I'm kind of uh, sad about as well. <laughs> I guess we'll talk about that in a bit, but. For Caden, you get this, you come to this point as well, roughly around the same point with Rex um, also, where you have to decide between the two, where basically you have to set one out to go with another team. And then, of course, what do you know? The team's in trouble and in distress, you have to save them. But then you come to a point where you have to choose to save one or the other. And, you know, (laughs) with the quickness, I was like, you know what? I'm going to save Ashley. So, uh, sorry, Kaden, my bad, man. <laughs> it's like, okay, it's, it's all right, Shepard. Uh, it's been an honor to serve you <laughs> before we finish. I just left <laughs> like Kaden's cool and all, but it's like, it's just nothing when I, when I have to make a comparison, but, uh, Ashley, on the other hand, um, I kind of, I wanted to romance her, but it didn't really work out for whatever reason. I'm not sure if I did something wrong. I think I did a pretty good job of trying to rotate all the characters in to, uh, you know, at least give me some options. I'm not sure if you can like, <laughs> I'm not sure if you can be a manhole in, in, uh, I think the first one, I think the second one, you can straight up be a man, uh, a space hole, <laughs> but at least in, in, uh, this one, I think it's really necess not really any way you can do that, but Either way, it, it basically ended up being that Liara wanted to have sex with him. I'm like, I don't, I don't really want to, I really had my sights on Ashley and I was trying to drop hints at her, you know, <laughs> through the various dialogue, but it, <laughs> she just wasn't taking the hint. And, and then I kept trying to talk to Ashley and then she wasn't, she kept blowing me off too. So I was like, <sighs> Well, damn it. And then of course, like I'm towards, I think the final part of the game. And then I think it, you know, it's basically the moment where you would have sex, the payoff or whatever. And then, you know, Liara came in she's like, Hey Shepard. So uh, you want to do that special thing? And I'm like, no, I don't. (laughs) I felt bad though. I did feel really bad about it, but I was like, I, I really, I really wanted to be with Ashley. So Let's <laughs> let's hope for uh Mass Mass Effect Two um, that hey I can uh, successfully por- report that uh I did actually get to get to do it with Ashley you know so <laughs> that's all that matters it doesn't matter <laughs> forget forget real life women okay yeah, as long if if I don't <laughs> if it isn't with Ashley it doesn't matter. <laughs> Life is <laughs> life is meaningless if Ashley. <laughs> oh man, that's that that is that is taking me for a loop. Um, but yeah, at least in terms of the general the the whole game itself, um, uh, it it's a lot of great improvements. I feel like um compared to the original, um, graphically is definitely way better. You know, you got HDR. And of course, I'm um, I'm playing on the Xbox Series X version, so you do get the that buttery, juicy, smooth, um, 120 FPS uh, as well. So you get all that going for it. Um, I don't think it's on P- that's on PS5. I think because PS5 handles the backwards compatibility differently, you only are combined to 60 FPS, uh, I believe. So. At least if you have the convenience, uh, I guess technically console wise, it seems like as of now, series X is the, is the better version, uh, from that perspective. If of course you have even like, you know, the display that supports 120 FPS, obviously, but yeah. So, uh, took advantage of that and, um, yeah, 
I mean, uh, I think off the bat, the combat feels way more better, way more responsive. I do remember like the original game, uh, on the 360, the aiming was very, it felt slightly laggy as well as the, um, the auto, the, 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 the audio in terms of the, the shooting and then guns and combat didn't feel as like responsive and, um, fulfilling as it's satisfying as it does in, in this, um, in this remaster version. So those are definitely big, um, big immediate noticeable things. I know there's a lot of very other various other subtle stuff that they changed that at least I, I didn't necessarily reckon, recognize, but at least like the environment, uh, I know the, what is it called? The, um, the drone, the, the, the car you drive on, on the, on the planet. Uh, that feels a little bit better. It still feels kind of wonky iffy. It has that weird, like halo driving control scheme, which I'm not, it's kind of hit or miss for some games. If there's a lot of, I think it works against this game sometimes because of the, all the various terrain you go across. I feel like in any other environment like halo, where there's a lot of open environment and not enough not necessarily a lot of terrain that, that like you're literally going all the way up in terms of planes and stuff in rocky areas. It does feel like it works a lot in its, uh, to its disadvantage when it comes to that. So, um, yeah, uh, outside of that, I know there's, <laughs> I ran into some, I still ran into some various bugs, nothing like game breaking, but at least some that are like enough to be annoying. Like, there's some where you like when you're locked on to in a specific area, if you walk backwards or try to walk away from it, you'll weirdly are locked, stay locked on to it. And there's really, uh, you have to do some trickery to get out of it. Um, there's some where like the environment isn't interactable in some cases, but those were very few and far between, but they, at least I think they're worth mentioning that uh, at least personally, I ran into those, um, in a few cases, but, um, all in all, man, uh, it's way better than, uh, the original for sure. Um, just the, the, the combat, uh, improvements alone, I think are definitely worthwhile. I'm not sure if, uh, I guess one gripe, if any, is I wish there was some way to, I w but I mean, at the same time, I know this technically is like, comes to that point where it's like, how much do you change of an original? game where you, you know, you still want to keep the essence of what it was originally before changing it. But, um, probably the one biggest thing I wish they added in the game that I don't, doesn't seem that it's not in there, at least now is, uh, the, I guess, kind of the encumberment <laughs> system. I guess that's, it's probably what I like to summarize it as where, Basically you have a limit of, I think 300 and once you get close to it, I think like 50 and up, you keep getting notified every time you get something new that, Hey, this is probably, this is about to be, um, this is about to be, uh, you're about to get full. You probably want to sell or change your stuff to junk before everything gets full and you're forced to do it or whatever. I wish there was a way to like automate, um, basically getting rid of stuff that isn't of a specific tier in terms of quality. Um, where it's like, of course I'm not going to do anything with like a level one, level one cryo rounds. I wish there was some way to like, you know, tell the game like, Hey, if I get level one cryo rounds, just sell them or automatically convert them to junk because there's been a lot of scenarios where I've had to, you know, take like 20, 30 minutes to try and, decipher between like stuff that I, I know I won't use. So basically it's pretty much the lowest damage or defense or, um, just the lowest compared to various other tiers. So if I have a level one cry rounds and I, I have, I know I have like level nine cry rounds, I'm going to get rid of the level one one. So I feel like that, that would have been a pretty welcome addition that wouldn't necessarily compromise, I guess the, uh, quote unquote designers intent. I don't know or the integrity of the original game. Um, it just, I think would have made the game a little bit more enjoyable overall. Um, that's probably my only nitpick I really had with this, with this game so far, again, not being close to beating it. I feel like 
uh, have him doing all the side quests and stuff. But, um, yeah, so I'm, uh, went full Paragon. I've reached the holy sanctity <laughs> of Paragonism. I don't know. I've, I think I've reached the cap for being a Paragon, at, uh, at least in terms of all the choices I made. Um, I guess that's, that's, that's kind of being it picky, but I know it's, there's some side quest that I was just doing to do, but I, I, I wish there was some way that you could, you could, they could just tell you straight up that this is a renegade or Paragon side quest. Um, but I don't, I, I think that that kind of would fall into the territory where it could potentially like mess with the integrity of the game too. So I say that, but at the same time, I feel like I, I understand why they wouldn't, you know, not what's the term. Um, not putting all your food in, uh, what was it? Some term terminology regarding not changing, um, what's already been established in the past or something. I don't know. Basically. Um, yeah, just some things I wish they could have changed, but generally speaking for the most part, very welcome improvement to the game overall. Um, a lot of, it's a lot of stuff I don't recall where I can't necessarily directly like, you know, um, uh, compare one between the other, but, um, yeah, at least from what I played so far, thoroughly enjoying it way better than the original and, you know, fully taking it all in doing all the side stuff. And, um, you know, um, yeah, just fully embracing, <laughs> embracing the mass effect experience. So overall, thoroughly enjoying it. Cannot wait for mass effect two, which is, you know, of course I'd say even to this day, technically the best, one of the best games of all time, which is like, I've, I feel like I had, I, uh, I didn't play it. Uh, I didn't play it long enough to, I think really have that sink in for me. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I remember, but not to extent to the extent that a lot of people did. I don't recall. So maybe at least playing it again, I can really soak in like, yeah, yeah, this is why this is really good. This is why I really enjoy this one, this game or whatever. So, uh, but then <laughs> with all that being in mind, then I think about, <laughs> I think about mass effect three, which, you know, I remember at least when it came out, how horrible it was as a, how horrible it was as a, you know, the ending specifically. I know that the general majority of the game was pretty fun. I recall, but just that ending, that, that ending moment, I know ruined a lot, at least for me as well, where, you know, I think a lot of people did not get what they want from that ending. Even the, um, you know, well, well, sorry guys. Okay. This is actually the real end. <laughs> and, um, so yeah, which I'm curious how they're going to handle all the DLC. I know the, the only missing DLC is some, some DLC from the first one that wasn't really good. A lot of people said anyway. So, and I guess I'm curious about that too. I, th I don't think I've done any DLC, but I don't, I think you can't play it until you beat the main game anyway. So I'll see how that plays out, but at least so far, man, mass effect, legendary edition definitely gets an a okay for me so far, at least playing the first one. But I think the first one technically is the one that needed the most work and got the most work because of how, you know, rough and, uh, outdated it was compared to, of course, the other ones that have aged like a graced, uh, well, grace, graced fine wine, a very nicely aged fine wine. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So that is my thoughts, impressions on a uh, mass effect legendary edition. I do recommend it, especially if you haven't played mass effect and you're curious and you are, do enjoy, um, space, space sci-fi, um, I think this is up your alley. I think this is probably one of the, one of the best games that actually, uh, really did 
character choice and decisions very well. And actually you really feeling the impact or, (laughs) or, uh, mass Mass effect effect. (laughs) of, of the decisions you made, uh, in, in, in each, uh, sequel of the games you actually did. I like literally recall, like in a lot of games, I'm like, wow. Oh man. Wow. They really remember me doing that. Oh man. (laughs) Or you, you know, you know, it's really good when they like really like, uh, carry your decisions over when you like, you feel kind of guilty. Like, Oh man, I didn't, I didn't think they would, uh, I didn't think they'd bring that over. <laughs> I didn't think they remember. I, I did that thing with that hooker. Oh, damn. Uh, but no, it, 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 I think that's just an indication of how good it is that like how much they factored so much attention to detail to even a lot of the very minor, um, decisions you made in the game that still technically have an impact. It's almost like <laughs> it was a mass that's effect, okay. which is, uh, I think that's probably the biggest selling point of this series is that I think in some cases, even more than the walking dead, um, you know, telltale in telltale games in general for, for a lot of aspects that like, you know, a lot of the stuff you thought, you thought would be impacted actually are and even stuff that you didn't think would be impacted as well are getting impacted too. Uh, but then it's like telltale games would be like, you know, something you thought totally would be like remembered or, you know, uh, the, the infamous kind of meme now, like, Oh, he remembered that. Oh, he won't forget that. (laughs) But technically they do because like they never bring it up in the, uh, the next games or next episodes. So, I definitely recommend it. Yeah, for sure. If you are into the, um, into sci-fi, you like to shoot people like the, like the pew pew and you like to, you know, shoot, shoot, um, be psychic, throw a little, (laughs) throw (laughs) the ignorant, the ignorant dad is coming out, throw a little, um, throw your damn, throw your biotic fields or your, your little, uh, your little, throw your little shields. <laughs> you gonna throw you, you gonna throw your little shield up. That's what you, that's what you gonna do, right? <laughs> what you going you, you trying to do something with that? You trying to do something with that carnage upgrade? You, you ain't going to. <laughs> oh, I kind of want that. I really do. I want some dad to be some dad. Let's player playing mass effect. <laughs> oh, oh, so you gonna, you gonna, <laughs> yeah, he has to be like an old, old ass granddad, uh, <laughs> playing basketball. Oh, oh, so you go, you, you gonna put up your biotic fields, are you? Mm, mm, I don't think you are. Mm. <laughs> I don't think so. You, you can't, you won't stand a chance against my shotgun. You won't stand a chance against my, uh, <laughs> something oddly specific. My, uh, incapacitating obliterating rounds. No, you won't. I digress. <laughs> um, so pretty much that's all I've been playing. Um, let's get into uh what I've been watching. And uh what I'm at least for Mass Effect, I'm like 30 30 ish hours so far. Um I believe it's like 35 generally, but I had some weird stuff where like I I was having a hard time finding some areas. So, you know, your mileage may vary in that respect, but I believe each game is generally 30 hours, um, probably way less if you skip all the side quests and stuff. So, but yeah, what I've been, what I've been watching Um, Yosuke, the, um, this, uh, caught, caught wind. I heard about it on Netflix's account that, uh, basically it's, uh, how do I define this? Basically it, it uh, follows, I think it, it roughly, it, it, uh, deviates off the, you know, I guess what I say folklore of, uh, you know, the first black samurai in, uh, Japan, 
Uh, but I, it feels like it totally deviates off that. Cause I know it's like, <laughs> I don't think the first black man, black samurai, uh, new noble Naga. And I don't think there was, <laughs> I don't think there was robots. I don't think it was mechs in, in this <laughs> if, I, if I was being very literal about it, but, uh, you know, I think it's one of those, those, uh, IPs that kind of deviates off an idea and, you know, kind of gets a little crazy with it, which is totally fine. Um, but yeah, that's basically the, the plot, uh, where basically you were previously a servant of somebody in Japan. And then, you know, of course, black people, hey, you know, you're trying to pick a fight. Well, actually, no, he was, he was good. He was defending some kid that this, 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 uh, this white man. Uh, was gonna was gonna kill and he's like hey you stop it and he's like man you a servant what you <laughs> you a servant you ain't gonna do nothing and then of course you know he goes into action and you know puts him in his place respectfully um and then nobunaga uh was like hey man that black man got some <laughs> he got some talent or i like his spunk i he i'm totally paraphrasing he didn't say nothing this but <laughs> I'm, 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 that's kind of the, at least the general generalization I got. So basically he recruited, um, him as the first black samurai. So, I mean, they play, they play, uh, they do some interesting things with it, uh, in terms of, uh, at least I think I watched two episodes. I think there's technically six overall, about a half an hour on Netflix. Um, they do some interesting stuff. They, they do, uh, some myth mythology, um, there's a woman that turns into a bear. I mean, like you don't see that all the time, you know, uh, then <laughs> the robot, the, the robot was kind of taking me out because it's like the robot is, uh, I mean, it, it makes sense because he's a robot. He's just very logical about stuff. He's like, I thought you, cause basically on the, on their team, there's another black man, uh, black, uh, guy, black guy on the enemy side of this, this, crew that's trying to take this girl. Um, and you know, <laughs> he's like, I thought there, you were only the black guy, the only black guy in Japan. And, uh, you know, <laughs> it's just how very literal and logical, like purely logical he is like, you know, that just doesn't make sense. There can't be, <laughs> there can't be more than one black man in Japan. So, um, it does some interesting stuff. Um, it is produced by a uh, flying Lotus. Of course, the awesome producer, uh, you know, made a lot of dope ass tracks. So that kind of kept me engaged you kind of get some very good, very familiar, uh, sh samurai shampoo vibes for sure. Um, the combat is good. Um, I'm not, I, I feel like this, this series is going to be made or broken based on the, uh, the last episode. It feels like, it, it, it seems like they're building up to some, some potentially, uh, fascinating payoffs, but at the same time, I feel like it could all be for nothing. So I'm still in that space right now where I'm like, Hmm, I'm not sure how I feel about this yet, but I'll probably give it another, uh, another shot. And since it's not, not that much of a commitment either. So, but yeah, Yasuke, the first black samurai, they don't say that, but that's essentially what it is. So, um, yeah, not to spoil some other stuff, but I am, I'm, 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 um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm mild on it so far. So, uh, moving on, uh, love death and robots. So the second season, or I guess they call it volumes because since it's technically, um, the episodes aren't, there isn't any con continuity be between the episodes. They're all basically separate enclosed, um, various episodes that like range from like 12 to 20 minutes. But man, some of these episodes are some very like, dare I say like black mirror type, like thought provoking episodes, I'd say. Um, it's funny. A lot of these feel like, like, um, like, man, this is what the, this is what the PS six is probably going to look like <laughs> PS seven games. Is it, am I watching a PS seven game right now? Um, but yeah, so 
Yeah, I don't want to spoil the episodes, but it's a lot of good ones. It's um, trying to think of some of the highlights without spoiling because there's some really good ones. It's one I forgot what it's called. Actually, let me look up the uh, the episodes real quick. I think they'll and also jog my memory. But it was like it was a really good one. I think it was Pop Squad. Pop Squad was a really good one. It like I mean, it really made you think. It like really was like it was really without well, spoiling it, it was really on some philosophical stuff where it's like it basically uh, challenges the 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 question of what if we were immortal and, you know, the problems that would kind of come into play because of that. Um, but, yeah, man, it was very, very thought provoking, you know, to kind of think about like, man, that I guess that could happen if we were like immortal and, you know, we had immortality. Um, it was just it was a lot of various weird ones. Uh, there was one of the freaking, uh, Michael B. Jordan. And like, I saw, I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Michael B. Jordan? What are you doing in this? What do you, what, what go somewhere? <laughs> go, 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 uh, <laughs> go, uh, go make next creed. Uh, I think he actually is directing the next creed. I want to say so, but yeah, that was interesting. It, it felt like it was, I think it was digital, but I think sometimes it wasn't. So it was, it was a pretty interesting episode that he was in into. Um, what was another one that was really good? Um, oh yeah, it, I forgot what it was called, but it, it, um, basically was behind this one dude who I guess was a mercenary and you come to find out some things about him and it, it does some interesting, uh, you know, some things as well to again, not spoil it because I think that's a lot of the appeal of some of these episodes, but overall I do recommend it again, not like a huge commitment. Uh, it, each episode is like ranges from 12 to 20 minutes. Um, and I think they're all worth watching. I think, um, I'm a fan of these like little shorts, various companies, um, doing like their one-offs mini movies. Um, I do recommend it pretty, pretty cool series. And Last, but certainly not least, Castlevania season four. Um, so technically this is the last season of Castlevania. I believe they s- confirm that it is going to be spinning off, which you can definitely, you can definitely tell in this series, um, at least how it ends. They, they, they definitely leave a lot of options of what they could still continue, um, in, 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 a uh, side uh, spinoff if there were to be one, but this season was pretty damn good. I'd say this might actually be the best season yet, which I think is saying a lot considering how good the previous seasons were, but man, ugh, again, I don't think I want to spoil anything in this. This uh, I think it's just watching it will do more justice than I will, but overall very I do recommend it if you're a fan of Castlevania. Somebody, I'm not like the biggest fan of Castlevania. I've technically played like one of the Game Boy games, I want to say. I think Circle of the Mune. <laughs> Circle of the Mune. Um, but uh, I do have a, I, I did thoroughly enjoy um, this series for sure. It uh, definitely has a lot of references to the games, of course, um, which is definitely appreciated. But yeah. It's pretty damn good. A lot of action, a lot of violence. It's up my alley. That, that's all you got to tell. If you want me to watch something, just tell me that. So violence, action. I'm in. Maybe Marvel superheroes. Those. <laughs> I feel partially bad because of that, but those are my weak points. I'm. Uh, I'm not. I'm. I'm not gonna deny it anymore. A uh, comedy as well, of course. But, um, yeah. I mean, I guess. Do I want to spoil? <sighs> yeah. Why not? Okay. So, spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. 
for Castlevania season four. I'm just going to mainly touch on the last episode, um, or, and also some highlights with, uh, throughout the season, this season, probably one of the highlights that I really loved, which is kind of relevant to now considering things, but I think it was episode four. Um, you saw the big, tall vampire lady. Basically there's a, a lesbian vampire couple. Um, and then this bigger one, I guess they were getting attacked and like, you know, she's like, I got to defend cause they were attacking at daylight. And of course, you know, vampires are weak, um, to daylight. So of course, uh, this was so dope. They revealed a really cool, really cool. Um, what was it? Uh, I think they call it like daybreaker armor, but man, it was so damn, it was, it, it was literally, uh, guts is, uh, like iconic armor from the mangas and stuff where, uh, man, it was, it, it, it was like a mix between guts is armor as well as like nightmare from soul caliber. And, you know, she had this big ass sword and then she's just going to town on these dudes. Uh, really good. Really damn good. Oh, so good. It, it was, it was really good. That was definitely one of the highlights. Um, and then probably the last episode with, uh, the whole final part. Um, and of course we find out that, uh, St. Urbane, uh, you know who I'm talking about if you watch the series, but turned his back on us just because he wanted to be with his love, which I, I, I get to a rough extent, but still betrayed us all. And, um, well, he did pay the ultimate price. Let's just say that. Um, I guess the main, what was an interesting twist was the main, like, I guess, uh, concept of the show, at least they insinuated was that, oh crap, they're going to try to bring Dracula back. And, uh, you know, I was guessing like, okay, I guess the last episode, they're definitely going to bring Dracula back. There's probably going to be a fight and then they'll you know, he'll go back. <laughs> He's like, Oh, I'm sorry. I'll go back. My bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Um, but then it took a weird turn and like, I guess they were, the plan was to bring him back in this hermaphrodite where it'd be both the soul of Dracula and, uh, his wife, where it would in turn cause a lot of turmoil and stress and in turn, like lash out on people. So <laughs> it was weird, but I mean, I was like, Hey, I mean, that's, seems to fall under Castlevania lore. So why not? But basically that, that plan falls apart. And then I guess the biggest twist of the show was that basically this, uh, basically this asshole, like what, who it felt like, a uh, um, what do you call it? Like a, a grunt for Dracula, if you will, actually turns out to be, um, death, uh, I guess as, as far as we know, um, basically trying to run the strings to try to bring Dracula back for the purpose that because he'll bring so much chaos, he'll bring death upon many people that will feed his soul and basically, you know, enrich himself because he thrives off death being death himself. So, um, it was very, that was a pretty interesting twist. I did, definitely didn't see that come in. Um, and yeah, lo, lo and behold, he ended up being the person that convinced the person that convinced, uh, St. Urbane to actually <laughs> do bring, try to bring Dracula back because of that. So it was a pretty interesting twist. Definitely. And then of course, uh, Trevor Belmont, uh, ultimately beats his ass, but looks like he sacrificed himself. I was like, Oh damn. And he, uh, you know, he put up a valiant fight and actually ultimately ended up succeeding. And then <laughs> come to find out, which was pretty interesting to us. I was like, ah, oh, he's, he's probably dead. Cause then, you know, you find out he got the, the other, the girl he's with the main character. I forgot her name, got her pregnant. So at least, you know, you kind of get a little bit of solace knowing that, he's, uh, the, the Belmont legacy is going to continue on like pretty much like the, the games and stuff. So, um, but then come to find out he actually was alive. I guess the St. Urbane transported him, um, which was like, Oh, I didn't see that coming. All right. Uh, cool. Nice. So 
Uh, and then weirdly like towards the end that like Dracula and his wife got out. So now they're, they're in they're they're back, but now they see the error of their ways because I guess really the main reason for Dracula getting corrupted was because his wife died. And I guess that at least what, from what I remember that kind of drove him on that path to destruction. But, uh, now they are back and now they, you know, got different identities now. And it seems like they're going to try to start a new and then eventually visit, uh, Alucard at some point, but it's too soon now. They don't want to, I don't know, cause turmoil, I guess, which makes sense because (laughs) the, the main, what protagonist of the first season or such. So yeah, but all in all, very, very satisfied with the series as a whole does some really good stuff with the IP, uh, actually goes to those extremes using the violence and stuff that you would assume, you know, kind of comes with Castlevania, which they do to a very great extent. So overall as at least a very mild fan of the games, I definitely thoroughly enjoyed season four of Castlevania. So, and that concludes pretty much all of what I've been watching as well. So with all that being said that, uh, that concludes episode one Oh five of switches sites. Um, yeah. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like the podcast, feel free to like rate, subscribe on your various podcasts and platforms. You can also catch me record this episode live, uh, on Twitch TV slash a switch. Uh, late evenings. <laughs> I'm gonna just say that now because I feel like I can't commit to a definitive time. Um, but you can also catch archives of this as well on youtube.com slash a switch in addition. But until next time, y'all get your game on. Oh yeah. Nobody's safe.